Yeah, it's about that time of day again. Welcome back to tonight's newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. Tuesday evening, May 12th, 2015. Making our way through this OPEX week of May. Technically the third week of May. I know, I know. In tonight's newsletter, crude oil is bullish ahead of tomorrow's inventory report. We saw the second straight week from the API of a draw on inventories. But we know what happened last week with that big draw, right? Look out below. Well, we're bullish. We're definitely bullish ahead of tomorrow's inventory report. And we need to be prepared for absolutely anything here tomorrow because of what I just described. So we have a clear bullish channel. We've got a great trading range and a measured move or two to work with on Wednesday. Definitely want to stay tuned if you're a crude oil trader. How about the gold? The yellow metal, the gold futures, is sideways with a slight bullish tone to the price action today. Yeah, the dollar's getting kind of beat up out there right now. So we'll be looking for buying opportunities at channel lows on gold. Very interesting scenario we see on gold. Gold and crude somewhat similar here. Then you got the oddball in the group, the euro, euro, the 6E euro futures is bearish this evening, coming off the highs of the channel, and our plan is to look for selling opportunities on the way back to those channel lows for Wednesday's session. Before we begin, two things here. First, make sure you remember all the, all the items we're talking about tonight on the video, everything I'm going over on these charts, I teach all of our students how to set up these charts, how to profit from these markets every day here at schooloftrade.com. We get a great free trial here at School of Trade. Definitely check it out. Second thing, want to make sure you're watching this video on our trading blog over here at sidewaysmarkets.com. Sideways Markets, our day trading blog here online, website is schooloftrade.com. Three reasons why you should be watching this video on our trading blog. First, you can download all the charts that I'm going to be going over tonight in the video. So right below this video, you'll see all those charts conveniently posted there for you. Second thing, if you're not a member of School of Trade and you're wondering what it feels like to be a member in our trade room, I'd love to give you a free pass. Come out and join me as a guest in our trade room anytime at your leisure. And of course, last but not least, yeah, there was three, right above my ugly mug, you'll see a spot to register for your nightly newsletter mailing list your name and your email address. That's all I need, and every evening I'll shoot you off an email right when the newsletter is ready to be used for the following day. Pretty good, huh? So three reasons here. Download the charts, grab your free pass, and register for the newsletter mailing list. Now, if you grab your free pass and you register for the mailing list, I'm going to send you a verification email. So please make sure you check your inbox, outbox, spam box, whatever other inboxes you got there. Find that verification email because I'm going to send you a verification email to make sure we have approval to keep sending you emails in the future. Shall we begin? Making a small change this week over to volume charts. Now, not a lot is being said about this right now, but the CME group is changing the format. Actually, they have already changed the format in the way in which tick data is being delivered to our charts. I'm going to be putting together a, a tutorial post on our blog in the next few days, possibly over the weekend, that will give you guys and gals some more insight on what to expect. If you're an AMP client, using CQG data or continuum data, you've already seen this change happen. And at this point, it's only affecting the E-minis and CME products. So gold, euro, and crude oil are still waiting to be rolled. But I'm taking a proactive approach. That is the reason why you'll see my tick charts have been replaced with volume charts. You'll notice they look almost identical. They're very, very similar, similar charts. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the why and what it all means. But just be aware, though, that the CME has now begun. Well, they have already made the switch. And now it's up to all the data providers to make their changes as well. I've been keeping in touch with most of them throughout the past few weeks, and we know that other data providers such as Rhythmic, uh, we have 
Continuum and CQG have already made the move. Kinetic, Rhythmic, all of the others will soon be moving suit as well. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. And look for a post on our blog later on this week, possibly over the weekend, about what all this means and what's really going on. If you have any questions, though, make sure you contact your broker. They can definitely give you more information. Shouldn't affect too much here on the gold, the crude, and the euro. It's really just the E-minis right now that have seen uh, a pretty big change in the way those tick charts work. Many of you have written me uh, or, or, or you know, sent me emails and posted comments about it already, so you guys already saw it. Bottom line, that's why I'm on volume charts. I'll explain more in that blog post later on this week, so stay tuned for that. How about some yellow metal? How about some gold futures on the 1500 volume chart? Right, Boy, it sounds really cool. Volume chart. Each candlestick has 1500 contracts of volume. What's the difference between a tick chart and a volume chart? Well, a tick is technically just a trade. It could be a thousand contracts of volume. It could be one contract of volume. Volume charts actually measure the actual volume. Deal? All right, let's keep going. Gold, slightly bullish, but boy, if you zoom out on this thing, you'll see we, we are really just kind of range bound here right now in the euro, right? Coming off these double bottom range highs up here so we are relatively range bound um, relatively is kind of a mild word we are very range bound here uh, on gold but a slight bullish tone here on the yellow metal you notice some higher highs and that wouldn't normally get me too excited but you can see we also see it lining up nicely there right at the lows and the midline you know oftentimes these you know so so channels oftentimes the midline is what really gives us that uh, that anchoring point to give us the confidence that we have the right channel. So the midline here definitely shows us some valuable information. So we can now see, because we know that these channels, right, they're going to rotate from high to low, up to high, back to low, up to high, back to low, right? You get the point. So we know that these markets they like to rotate back and forth. We came to the highs, and now we should see price try to make a run for it at the low. So Obviously, that's where we are going to be looking to buy. Our plan, our goal is to find buying opportunities down around this area, down lower, right? That way, we can buy the low of this range, right? Remember, we are range bound right now. So we do want to buy the low of that range, buy at a discount in a bullish trend. We can definitely see, though, buying that channel low, buying that extension support, buying that trigger zone support, right? So we'll be looking for buying opportunities on the way back up after we test that channel low. If you're a seller right now, you've got a very short-term opportunity here to be selling down to those lows, but then you got to really be careful because until we see a lower high, right? Until we see a bounce and a lower high, then we can start looking at this as a bearish trend because as of right now, a lower low here would be expected before we make that next push higher. If we try to go higher, though, and we fail, then we have that lower high as well as the lower low. And now, of course, we're on the bearish side. Look for more information on that as we trade this live in our trade room tomorrow morning. Again, looking to find buying opportunities at those channel lows. If we make for a run at these highs here, just be careful buying right into 96.3. 96.3 is, is clearly the, the high of that range. That's the only thing I have concern about. So if you can get to it quickly or wait for it to break and pull back to 96.3, but just be careful. Don't be buying directly into that 96.3. And then, of course, you got some easy targets. You got 1,200 big round number target. You've got channel high, right? That'll be a nice big juicy target and then a measured move resistance target overhead right relatively easy to see where that where that came from that's a pretty easy target there at 1205.7 so we got you guys covered here for tomorrow if we go lower very short term opportunities to the sell side before you got to start looking for the buy side here down at these range lows and channel lows if we go higher here we're buying those dips on the way to 1,200, on the way to the top of the channel, and on the way to the measured move resistance. If we sit here inside this range, just be aware, okay, you want to stay patient at the very least to see this price 
rattled around off the lows of this range. I should have marked up this level as well. I don't know how I missed that one. But definitely be looking for, yep, right there, 1188.1. So again, buying opportunities, buying opportunities, buying opportunities. If we sit right in the middle, if we end up going sideways, we'll continue to keep looking for buying opportunities at those, right, at those channel lows. Now you've got the strategy for the gold, for the yellow metal. Shall we keep going? Let's keep going. How about this euro? Yep, the 6E, the Euro Futures. Now, do not adjust your television sets at home, kiddos. Yes, that is a 10,000 volume chart. Don't ask me why. I'm just here for the dancing and, of course, the, and of, and of course the appetizers. But, you know, this 10,000 volume chart looks exactly like the old 2400 tick chart we are using last time, right? Very, very similar. Again, doesn't make a lot of sense because the volume on the Euro is right around the same volume as crude oil, right? Nothing like you'd see on the S&P. In the S&P, you would need something similar to that. Really, the reason why you need to have a chart this large of a time frame is just because of the range, right? It's a highly liquid market. It doesn't move in a lot of range. And because it only has four ticks per point, right, it all kind of gets condensed in. So you got to use a larger time frame chart. Now that we have that history lesson out of the way, how about we have euro being bearish? Very easy to see here. The euro definitely looking bearish. Difficult to call it bullish right now, right? Really difficult to call it bullish. We really don't have a lot of confidence here that the bulls are in control. We got double bottom there, you know, try drawing it up here. But, you know, boy, very underwhelming move here uh, higher this morning. So definitely looking at the bearish side here right now on the euro. We see we have a bear channel, and you know how these channels work, right? We're going to go from the low up to the high, down to the low, up to the high, down to the low, right? You get the point. So here we are rotating, right? We call this the rotational movement from channel lows to highs and highs to lows. So we are expecting this price to rotate back down towards its lows. Our plan depending on what happens here in the overnight session, right? Our friends in Asia, Australia, and then of course tomorrow in London and Europe. So we know that, first of all, if price goes higher here, we'll be looking for the buyers to try and fail so we can sell this sucker right back down. If it goes lower here overnight, we're looking for retracement opportunities here to sell short down to these lows. Whatever you do though, be careful once we get down to those lows, because oftentimes what's going to happen is, well, you're going to see buyers come in, right? You're going to see the bulls step in and buy up this 1150, 1140 area. We get a lot of measured move support down here. So if you happen to miss the move down, stay patient for the retrace and then take it one more time. Okay, whatever you do, though, just don't sell directly into this area down here. You've got your shot right now. So we're looking for those selling opportunities on the way down to test this swing low. And then I would assume here we're going to get some buyers entering the market and we'll want to enter on the next push lower, right? Possibly a measured move on down here for tomorrow so depending on what direction we move in the short term that will determine what i look for in the medium to long term if we go higher i'm definitely still bearish i wouldn't call this a bullish market until we go higher pull back and then give us a higher low that higher low would then confirm that the sellers have been basically held at bay while the buyers have, have maintained control again so as we go higher, I'm looking to sell it short. As we go lower, I'm definitely looking to sell those, right? Sell those rips, sell the retracements on the way down. Just be careful, don't sell short directly into this major support area. Wait for it to get in, come out of that major support, then let some other poor sucker test those lows and then wait for it to make its next leg down. That may be back at the channel high. It may be at another short-term trend line high. We'll be, we'll be, of course, trading this in real time in our trade rooms. Come out and see us, and we'll take a look at what we're getting in real time. All right, may need an update on that later on tomorrow, okay? So keep an eye on the measured moves for targets below. Keep an eye on that resistance area overhead for some selling opportunities overhead. Deal? All righty, let's keep going. Next up here, moving to the crude. 
Now, boy, I'm glad I took this snapshot when I had the chance here. I'm not sure if you guys are watching this tonight, but this little needle point right there, that thing shot up in about a half a second just after 6 o'clock Eastern time. So definitely there are some bulls out there in this market right now on crude oil. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but we saw this exact same scenario just one week ago. We were bullish, bullish. In fact, we were up, I think it was, what was it, 64s before? Yeah, 62 half, right? This was this was one week ago right there, right? And so, of course, we saw we saw what happened before, right? We had a nice bullish trend there, and then whoops-a-daisy, it just collapsed completely off those highs. So we've got another scenario. It's almost a carbon copy of what we saw just one week ago. Now, obviously, just because it happened last week does not really give me any confidence it will happen again. But I remind myself to be open-minded to both directions going into inventories. Now, don't forget here, we do have a weekly API report, second straight draw. That means we have less than expected inventories. Now, of course, less than expected inventories could be because of higher demand or lower supply. The rig count keeps going down, the oil industry consolidating right now because they're trying to adapt to these uh, very, very cheap prices here, right? Although it doesn't seem to be reflected at the gas station anymore, does it, right? Still paying almost five bucks a gallon here in Los Angeles. How's that math work? Anyways, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know who's making the money on that, right? That's okay. Small businesses, all of the uh, local gas stations are usually small business owners, so let them make their money too. Bottom line, though, is we have Tuesday's API inventory. That's a negative two million second straight draw. Again, it's it's all kind of it's all it's it's all a lot of posturing ahead of tomorrow's news event. You really can't put that much weight on this, except it definitely explains a lot, right? For this rush up to these highs here. All I know is these buyers up here, they better have a good backup plan because this is the worst place to be buying right now. Historically, you buy the highs of a channel, I'm looking to buy it as it pulls all the way back and gives us a chance off those channel lows. So, carbon copy of last week. Inventories, we're expecting a draw. We got a draw last week too, even on the even on the DOE report and price still collapsed. So, we're bullish this evening, trading inside this bull channel. Our plan is to look for buying opportunities at support levels. I'm not just going to buy because I think it might go higher. Looking for buying opportunities at support. What does that mean? That means we're looking at buying opportunities down at these lows. Buying opportunities below the channel lows. Buying opportunities at the range lows. Okay. Once we get below that 60.21 though, then all bets are off and we'll start using these support levels as targets. I'll say again what I've what I've said a few times on the euro and the gold. I'm not going to call this a bearish market, though, until we see a lower high. It's the lower high that makes me believe the bears are in control. A lower low doesn't give me very much. I'm expecting a lower low. But if we see this thing bounce, though, and give me a lower high... Now, again, my line in the sand here is definitely going to be that 60-21 area. We can easily put together another run back up here between now and tomorrow morning at 1030. So bottom line right now, if you're a bull here on, on the CL, you got to wait patiently here to get those buys off those range lows. That's where you're going to get the best buying opportunities. If you're a seller right now, I'd be looking for selling opportunities. It's counter trend, but it's going to be it's, it's going to be a lower percentage. You got a small window here. You know that big knee jerk reaction up there. You know there's going to be some sell stops here below that 61.21, right? You know there's going to be a chance here to look for that failed second attempt up here. So if you're a seller right now, I'd be looking for those buyers to try to run this up one more time and then collapse, right? I wouldn't just sell it right now. I mean, you can do whatever you like, but with my account though, I would I would definitely not be looking to sell it right now. I would really make those bulls commit to it one more time and then once they fail, that's going to be your cue there to get short off these highs. So sellers are, again would wait for the buyers to try, swing and miss, right? Twice at these highs, sell it back to those lows and you've got easy targets 
waiting for you below you. But whatever you do, sellers, stay the heck away from the sell side down around these lows until we know more about this in tomorrow morning's session. We have a plan now here, bearish on the euro, slightly bullish on the gold, and of course, very bullish here right now, heading into the inventory report tomorrow on the black gold, the Texas teeth, crude oil futures. We got a plan for tomorrow. And guys, I know that you may be alone right now at your computer watching my newsletter video, but please remember, you're not alone out there in the markets every day as a trader, right? We got a great plan for you here at School of Trade. I've been teaching people really giving you the opportunity at a career in the financial markets for, boy, over 11 years now. It'll be my 15-year anniversary uh, trading. It'll be my 12-year anniversary teaching this coming December. We offer a free trial here at schooloftrade.com. I think you're going to find a ton of great education as well as more of an intimate understanding of how we trade here at School of Trade by taking that free trial. I'll, off, I'll also give you a free pass. Come out and join me in the trade room as a guest as well. And while you're over here, check out the intermediate, beginner, uh, advanced courses. You know, we have, we have a, a, a course for pretty much everybody. That way, if you're a brand new trader, you don't have to feel like you're going to be overwhelmed with advanced stuff. So we really make it easy for anyone to get a new career in the financial market started. And, of course, we always have someone standing by here 24-7, 365, if you have any questions along the way. All right, guys, hope you do well today with us. We had another great day in our trade room today. We always seem to find a great way to make some money and, and learn a little more every day with our students. I look forward to working with you tomorrow morning as well. So come out and see me tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern time. If not, I'll see you tomorrow evening. Shall we do it again? Same time, same place. Boy, beautiful weather here in Los Angeles. Hope you guys are having a great evening as well. Be well out there. Be nice to each other and be here tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening with me again for tomorrow night's newsletter. And I'll see you then. My name is Joseph. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.